The story begins with Kahora Nagase, a young woman working at an office job. She receives a call from her friend, who tells her she's late, so she quickly finishes up her work. As she heads over to meet her friends, she thinks about how her life isn't that exciting since she just works an average job. She wishes she didn't look so tired, but she suddenly becomes dizzy and passes out. She wakes up to find a man apologizing to her, and she recognizes him as God. He explains that her world is experiencing disturbances caused by dimensional distortions and as he was destroying one of the distortions, it ended up hitting her. He managed to save her soul, but notes that it's impossible to send her back to her own body, so he offers to make amends by reincarnating her into another world. She gets a chance to say her goodbyes to her friends and family, and they are surprisingly accepting and assured that she will be okay no matter where she goes. God tells her she will be reincarnated into a world that's similar to Earth, but it's not as technologically advanced. Kahora thinks that since it's less advanced, it will be more dangerous, so she demands an overpowered skill to help her survive. In her new world, Kahoru encounters Celeste, the goddess responsible for her reincarnation. She is happy about their situation, because it gave her a chance to talk to Earth's god who she has a crush on, so she plans to give Kahoru extra blessings. She gives her the ability to communicate and understand the language of her new world, as well as a younger body. She wonders what kind of skill she wants to help her survive in the world, and Kahoru learns she's being sent to the medieval-style world of Verni, where magic, monsters, and hunters are common. Thinking about the ability that will best help her survive, she asks for the ability to freely create any kind of potion with any effects that she wants. The goddess thinks it's too OP, but Kahoru reminds her that her god promised her she could have anything, so Celeste ends up agreeing. On top of this, Kahoru also demands that her potion containers can be created at any size, as well as an item box with limitless storage. Celeste can't believe she's asking for so much, but Kahoru threatens to complain to her god, so the goddess agrees to all her demands. As she is about to be reincarnated, Kahoru asks for one more thing. The goddess is fed up with her, but Kahoru asks to be her friend, and she happily agrees. In a flash of light, Kahoru arrives in her new world, and she immediately realizes she can hear the birds talking. She slams her head on a tree, thinking the goddess gave it to her as part of her communication ability. She decides to try out her potion skill, creating a healing potion, and it instantly heals the wound on her head. She eagerly heads off to find a town, but after hours of walking, she becomes exhausted. Luckily for her, she just creates another potion, and it instantly restores her stamina. She makes it to a town, and she thinks her first task is to secure some money. She plans to sell her healing potions, so she visits the Hunter's Guild. However, the receptionist Gilda isn't familiar with her potions, telling her she should sell them to a pharmacist instead. Kahora worries she'll have nowhere to sleep since she needs to sell her potions before she has any money, but Gilda allows her to stay for the night. Kahora goes on to try and sell her potions, explaining that her blue potion can heal external wounds, and the yellow one can heal internal injuries. The adventurers don't believe her, so she doesn't manage to sell anything. Although the adventurers are not interested in her potions, some of them ask for her help with odd tasks, like rubbing their feet and giving them a massage, and she happily agrees so that she can afford food for the night. There's suddenly an injured man who is carried into the guild. He seems to be in a rough condition, and Kahora wonders why nobody is healing him. She decides to do it herself and gives him one of her yellow potions, and pours her blue potion onto his wound, which instantly heals it. Her actions are hailed as miraculous, and the hunters consider her an angel. Learns Kahoru learns that magic is a rare skill, requiring a lifetime of training, with even the most proficient mages only able to perform simple tasks like lighting a candle or producing a drop of water. Kahora thinks she should keep a low profile, but she is summoned to meet with Baron Rennie, the lord of the land. The man takes her by force, but she warns him not to be so rough with her bracelet. Gold. Kahoru is taken to the Baron's mansion, and the Baron asks her where she got her potions from. She tells him that she can make them, but it requires her bracelet which is associate damaged. The Baron promises to punish the man, and Kahoru is happy to get her revenge on him. She tells the Baron she needs time to fix her bracelet, so he orders his maid to prepare his best room for her. Kahora thinks she's safe for the time being, but she decides to find a chance to escape. Head the head maid brings her tools to help her repair her bracelet, and she asks for an assistant as well. 
She wants someone around her age, so all the maids around her age are gathered. She selects one named Hannah as her assistant, but when they are alone in her room, she knocks her out. Kahoru then goes on to store all the furnishings and food into her item box, and she even takes Hannah's clothes. She cuts her hair, and using another potion, she is able to disguise herself as Hannah, and she's able to get out of the room without being suspected. The Baron is devastated when he finds she has escaped, and has also taken all his stuff. We see Kahoru has changed her hair and eye colors, so she hopes she won't be recognized. She sees people pursuing her in the distance, so she decides to hide behind a tree. She has a snack while she waits for her pursuers to pass by, but she finds that it's the hunters from the guild, and they don't even want to find her since she saved their friend, so they end up just heading back. Kahoru prepares to head for the royal capital, determined to make the most of her new life. She sleeps in the forest on the bed she took from the Baron's mansion, but there are three children that pass by, and the youngest girl named Eunice starts calling her a goddess. Kahoru decides to play along, and Eunice thinks she must be Celeste, but Kahoru corrects her, saying she is from another world, but Celeste is her friend. Eunice's brother Hector introduces himself as the son of the Count Aiden, as well as introducing their knight Fran. They explain they are on a journey to visit their grandmother who is gravely ill, and Eunice begs Kahoru to cure her grandmother with her powers. Kahoru has no other choice, and agrees to help on one condition, telling them to tell her a story that will make her cry. The two children tell her stories of their troubles, but she just finds them childish. Fran tells her story of how she trained her whole life as a knight, rejecting all her marriage proposals. She developed a strong body, but she's now past the age of marriage, so she's afraid she will be alone forever. This makes Kahoru cry, and she creates three potions, supposedly from her goddess tears. She hands one to Hector to cure his grandmother, she and one to Fran, which she instructs her to only drink around people she trusts, and the last one is also for her, which she can use to cure someone she wants. We learn that the children are from the western kingdom of Balmore, and we see that one month later, their father Count Aiden tells the king about their encounter with the goddess. King Sergei finds it hard to believe, but Fran drinks her potion in front of everyone, and it seems to make her younger. Everyone starts to believe, and Fran reveals her other potion, wanting to give it to the king's aide, Roland. We learn Roland was actually the crown prince, but after losing the use of his right arm in a fight, Sergei succeeded the throne instead. Roland reluctantly takes the potion, and his arm is miraculously restored. Sergei wants him to be king, but Roland claims it's a hassle, and he just wants to have an easy life. Meanwhile, Kahoru makes it to Eris, the capital of the eastern kingdom of Brancot, and she finds that the people there seem to worship Celeste. Hoping to not make the same mistakes as she did in the previous town, Kahoru visits a pawn shop to sell some of the items she took from the Baron's mansion. The shopkeeper thinks they are stolen goods, but Kahoru tells her a sad story of how she inherited them from her mother who just passed away. The man is brought to tears, and he buys her items. At the Brancock Castle, we meet Prince Ferdinand, as he complains about all the paperwork he has to do, but his friend Fabio tells him it will only get worse when he becomes king. Their friend Alan arrives, and the three decide to take a break and get some food. They visit a restaurant in the city, where Kahoru is working as a maid, and Ferdinand and Fabio are surprised when they try food that they have never tasted before. Ferdinand thinks it's even better than the food from the palace, and Alan credits Kahoru for introducing the new foods. He tells them that there is more to the restaurant than just the food, and he talks to one of the waitresses to receive their special service. Ferdinand and Fabio wonder what it could be, so Alan tells them to listen to what Kahoru is saying. They overhear her giving wise advice, and become eager to get their turn. When she approaches them, they ask her how to run their domain efficiently, and she tells them to lower the tax rate. They are taken aback by this, but she explains how lowering the tax would bring in more merchants and farmers, who can buy better tools and thus increase their profits. Her advice is something they didn't expect, and after a bit of thought back in the castle, they realize that it makes a lot of sense. Ferdinand starts to want Kahoru for himself, and is willing to do anything to get her. With all the customers gone, the girls sit together and enjoy a wonderful meal that Kahoru has cooked. Kahoru realizes that ever since she has come to this town, she hasn't used her potion powers for healing, but instead for making food, and her plans for a peaceful life seems to be working out. However, things start to get bad for her when Prince Ferdinand visits the restaurant constantly, 
and keeps bothering her with questions and demanding for her to be the only one to serve him. This makes her lose her temper, and she tells him off for his disrespectful behavior, saying that if he doesn't stop, he won't be allowed in the restaurant anymore. Angered by her outburst, Ferdinand grabs her hand and forces her to follow him, but all the customers and waitresses block the door, so he has no choice but to let her go and leave. He meets his friends outside, and they console him about the rejection, telling him to stop harassing Kahoru, and saying he should instead start treating her like a lady. So Ferdinand stops going to the restaurant, and Kahoru thinks she can finally have her peaceful life. She sweeps outside the restaurant, but a royal carriage arrives, and she gets an invitation along with a package. It is a summon from the castle, and she knows her peace is about to be disrupted again. On the day of the party, Kahoru arrives at the castle wearing a dress that she had stolen from the Baron. The guard at the gate takes her invitation, but when he looks at her, he thinks she is the type of girl who bullies those beneath her, so he quickly lets her in. Kahoru enters the castle and can see different women trying their best to look beautiful for Prince Ferdinand, because he is supposed to choose his bride at this party, but she changes into her maid outfit and prepares to serve the nobles. Meanwhile, Ferdinand becomes annoyed because he can't seem to find Kahoru despite sending her a personal invitation. Fabio and Alan tease him to stop looking so angry, since his expressions are going to scare his future wife. However, Ferdinand doesn't care about what they have to say, since he is only thinking about Kahoru, but Fabio mentions how he saw her serving the guests. Ferdinand quickly rushes over, but when he sees her, he demands to know why she's in a maid outfit and not a dress. Kahoru reasons that she's just a maid, and the only logical reason why a maid would be invited to the castle would be to serve, which is why she is wearing such clothes. Ferdinand calls for his subordinate, demanding to know why he didn't deliver Kahoru the clothes he picked out. The man swears he delivered it, but Kahoru says he never explained anything to her, so she assumed the package was for the business next door. Ferdinand gets mad at the man, but he's glad that Kahoru was able to be there, and he immediately prepares to introduce her as his fiancée. Everyone is shocked to hear this, but he starts introducing her to his parents. Kahoru thinks he couldn't marry a commoner, but he suggests they could just get a noble to adopt her. However, Kahoru snaps him back into reality, saying he never even asked her if she wanted to marry him. She rejects him, saying that the life of a queen would mean that she would lose her freedom and privacy. Ferdinand proclaims his love for her intellect and beauty, but she breaks a plate and uses a piece to cut her face. She calls herself a fool, and with her looks gone, she claims she has no value to him. She rejects him once again and dashes out of the castle, while Ferdinand's friends tell him not to go after her. Kahora gets out of the city, and once she gets far enough, she uses a healing potion to heal her face, and she celebrates getting away from the prince. She rides a carriage over to the western kingdom of Balmor, with a merchant named Johan. She gives him advice about his business, and he even ends up offering her a job, but she decides to go her own way. She manages to find a job as a live-in maid at a workshop, but when she gets there, it's not quite what she expected. The owner Barnot introduces himself, but warns her that everyone they hire almost immediately quits. He shows her around, and we see the place is in a rough condition, but thanks to her potions, she is able to clean the entire place in just a few hours. While cleaning up, she sees one of the men working on a hip flask. This gives her an idea, thinking that instead of selling her potions, she can just sell the containers. Thanks to her power, she is able to create a beautiful glass bottle. The men are amazed seeing it, and they immediately agree to help her sell it. Thanks to this, Kahoru is able to make some money and start living an easier life. As she visits the market to buy fruits, a boy suddenly runs past and steals her money. The shopkeeper panics, but Kahoru reveals it was a fake, and it even has a trap to track the boy. At night, she is visited by that same boy, and he tells her about a girl named Kosha, whose mother was hurt by a noble. Despite appearing to be a peaceful city, we learn that it's not quite what it seems, as they visit the slums. They reach Kosha's house, and Kahoru uses a potion to change her hair and eyes. She introduces herself as a friend of the goddess and creates a potion for Kosha's mother, which completely heals her, and Kosha wonders how she can repay her, but Kahoru simply hugs her as payment. We see the orphan children start to follow her, and she ends up creating a secret society known as the Eyes of the Goddess, where they tell her about people who need help. We see the merchant Johan, 
praying to the goddess in front of his sick daughter, when he's visited by Kahoru posing as a chemist, but they instantly recognize each other. He's surprised to learn that she is the goddess's angel, and asks why she visited his house, because she supposedly only visits the poor people, but she says that it's due to his charitable donations to the poor. Johan is ready to offer her anything in return, but she simply asks him to keep her identity a secret, and to help anyone in need. We learn that she's planning to get donations from the rich in the goddess's name, while helping people simultaneously. She takes candies from the manor and gives them to the orphan children. Kahoru is embarrassed by the eyes of the goddess name, and asks if the kids can change it, but they refuse. In a flashback, we see that she catches up to the boy Emil, after he runs away with her pouch, and even heals the wounds on his hands using a potion. She's surprised to hear that he stole for his sick friend Bill, so she demands to know Bell's location. She visits her, healing her instantly with a potion, and the kids gathered around her are relieved to see her healthy. She introduces herself as a friend of the goddess, asking the children to help her find sick people to heal, and in return, they will be kept well fed. We see that's how the Eyes of the Goddess organization was created, and the rumors of a goddess angel spread throughout the city. Over at the workshop, one of the employees, Azel, confesses to Kahoru, asking her to be his fiancée. She thinks that she has finally entered her popular phase, but is instantly dejected when she hears that he only wants her to pretend to be his fiancée for his brother's party. We see the party at Viscount Leo's home, where Kahoru eagerly munches down on food, when she encounters Johan and goes to thank him for preparing her dress for the party. She asks him about the women lined up, and we learn that they are potential marriage candidates for the eldest son, even bringing gifts to make a good impression. Using the opportunity, she joins the line and introduces herself to the eldest son as a friend of Azel. She asks him to call his servant Calvin, and we learn that Calvin is his loyal guard who was crippled while trying to protect him from a bear attack. She asks the crowd to raise their hands for the goddess's blessing, and as they close their eyes and pray, a red potion appears, which she asks Calvin to drink. He reluctantly takes it, and to everyone's surprise, his disabled leg is healed. Everyone thinks it's a miracle, and Azel wonders who Kahoru actually is, but we see that she has disappeared. In a temple of the royal capital, the bishop is informed of this event, and orders his men to find Kahoru, no matter what the cost, but we see he has ill intentions. Azel finds Kahoru in the workshop with the others, so he takes her outside and asks about what happened. As she tells him about her ability, and that she's a friend of the goddess, they are interrupted by Azel's brother, who informs her that she has been summoned by the king. The next morning, just as King Sergei is getting tired of waiting, he is told that Kahoru tried to enter the back gate dressed as a commoner, but wasn't let in. We learn the guard harassed her in exchange for letting her in, but she cleverly makes use of the situation, promising she'll never listen to the orders of the king, and that she will live freely in the goddess's name. The king sighs in disappointment, as we learn that nobody, including the king, can overturn a vow to the goddess. Kahori uses the same excuse to turn away the bishop from her door, but when he keeps pestering her, she drops an explosion potion on his carriage in the form of a divine punishment. The news of this reaches the king, sparking disputes between the representatives of the royal family and the temple, arguing over who will take Kahoru. To put a stop to it, a public gathering is convened in front of the goddess's statue to question Kahoru. The king asks her if she has any divine message for him, but she tells him that she doesn't, saying she's not bound to the kingdom, and that she's there by coincidence, which surprises them. Hearing this, the priests think that she will naturally join the temple as a follower of the goddess, but she claims that she's not a follower. The crowd is shocked, so Kahoru explains that she believes in more than one god. They are bewildered when she tells them that she's the goddess's friend, and that she will bless only the people who deserve it. When she asks why the size of the goddess's chest is exaggerated in the statue, a bucket suddenly drops on her head, and everyone around her laughs. We see Kahoru out getting food in the market. She reflects on how she has been living freely ever since the inquiry, so she thinks she should start making potions for those in need, as the secret organization has its limits, and she realizes she needs an influential ally to achieve this goal. While returning, she encounters Fran, but fails to recognize her. Fran recalls their time in the forest, leaving her stunned as the realization hits her. Fran explains how she became young again, and Kahoru is in awe of the goddess's powers. 
She requests Fran to introduce her to the count she serves, and she gladly agrees, but notes that her master has changed, and we learn she now serves Roland. He assures her that he's willing to help her as she is his benefactor, and Fran also backs him up. After some consideration, she accepts, and they are all added as members of this secret organization. Kahoru asks the members to keep her identity as a goddess from another world a secret, claiming that she wishes to spread the blessings. She asks them to help her sell potions, saying that although they are not as strong as the goddess's tears, they will heal injuries and diseases while being affordable. She notes that she has put a limitation on them, which makes them expire after five days, so they aren't stockpiled for war. The group is impressed, and promises their full support. The group decides on the name, Goddess's Light for themselves, and Kahoru is annoyed that she's stuck with another extravagant title. On her way back to the workshop, she meets Azel, who tells her that someone came looking for her from another country. We see that Ferdinand has chased Kahoru all the way to Balmore, hellbent on taking her back with him, but Fabio and Alan plead with him to behave decently and apologize first. Kahoru tricks Ferdinand by telling him that she is the elder sister of the Kahoru they met, and then teases him by saying that Fabio and Alan are more her sister's type, while she hates the conceited types like Ferdinand. Alan invites her to Brancott, so she can live together with her sister, but she rejects their proposal by lying that she can't live in the same kingdom as her sister, because it would cause a power imbalance between the kingdoms. As Ferdinand is about to take her by force, he's surrounded by the men at the workshop, but Kahoru asks them to leave. Ferdinand is dragged away by his friends, and on their way back, they wonder if it was actually Kahoru they met. Fabio notes that Kahoru has zero interest in Ferdinand, but Ferdinand is determined to get her back, no matter what. In the holy land of Ruta, the Pope is informed that the kingdom of Balmor has rejected their summoning of Kahoru. We learn that Ruta's authority has been on a decline ever since Celeste's descent 53 years ago, and he claims that the goddess's blessings should only be reserved for Ruta. Kahoru's potions are distributed throughout the kingdom as planned, and we see the positive effects. Roland notes how they will now be able to increase production, but she rejects the idea, saying that the advancement of medical technology is more important in case something happens to her, and instructs Johan to start distributing potions in the neighboring kingdoms of Asid and Brancot. Meanwhile, in the enemy empire of Aligot, the king hears about the potions, and orders his military to invade Balmor, so they can get their hands on Kahoru, and mass-produce the potions. Back in Balmor, Kahoru buys the orphan children their own house, gets the blacksmiths to make utensils for them, and even teaches them how to make their own food. She also teaches them basic finances, and proper etiquette to handle customers. Kahoru helps sick families at night with the help of the tears of the goddess, believing that no one would recognize her in her disguise, but to her surprise, a girl she had healed gives her a flower the next day. King Sergei is informed of a Ligot's attack, with their 30,000 soldiers, and their plan to attack after crossing the mountain. However, they have 40,000 soldiers at their disposal and the home territory advantage. Roland thinks that it's strange that a Ligot would attack despite their disadvantage, but they are suddenly alerted that a Ligot forces have started attacking from Ruta's side, with 20,000 of their soldiers, and Sergei wonders why a neutral territory would allow such a thing. Emissaries arrive from Ruta to claim custody of Kahoru before the war begins. Sergei suggests turning them back, but Roland says that they should meet Kahoru. The emissaries meet Kahoru, and tell her to evacuate to the Holy Land with them for protection, but Kahoru deduces that the Holy Land allowed a Ligot to pass through their lands without trying to stop them, because they are allied with a Ligot. The emissaries are arrested on charges of espionage, as Kahoru asks Roland to inform the other nations about Ruta's betrayal. Afterward, Kahoru tells Roland to take care of the rest as she leaves the room, telling them that she's going for a walk, while planning to crush the forces of a Ligot. Back at the house, Kahoru gives the kids potions, and tells them to run away if anything goes wrong during her trip, but instead, they express their gratitude and insist on going with her, saying they feel indebted to her, so she agrees to take them along. She thinks of a plan along the way, deciding to evacuate all the villages in the path of the enemy army, and clear out the food supplies in the process, while locating all the water supplies. The following day, Fran spots the enemy resting a few hours away, and tells Kahoru that they will pass through soon. They notice a bishop alongside the enemy commander, 
revealing a collaboration between the Holy Land of Rua and the army. They allow the main enemy unit to cross the canyon, as they patiently wait for the logistics unit to follow, intending to destroy all their supplies. They see the logistics unit coming through the canyon, and bombard it with explosives supplied by Kahoru. With the enemy distracted, Kahoru proceeds to light their supplies on fire. The main unit returns after noticing the commotion, but they arrive to find all their supplies already burned to the ground. The commander orders everyone to advance forward, and take the food and water from the villages ahead. With the enemy's morale already low from their supplies being destroyed, things take a turn for the worse when they discover that all the water has been poisoned, and there is no food in the villages. Meanwhile, we see a kid from one of the villages come running to Kahoru. He informs them that the enemy has taken over a secret well in a village which had been hidden from her, but traders sold this information to the enemy, so Kahoru and her companions head over to the village. Roland and his soldiers fight the enemy in the village, while Kahoru heads toward the well with the kids. She arrives at a shed where the well is located, and orders everyone to keep a watch around the shed. They enter the shed and find three soldiers guarding the well, who realize that Kahoru is the one poisoning the wells after seeing the bottle in her hand. She wonders how she should deal with them without causing a commotion, but Belle takes the bottle from her and starts running toward the well. She tries to stop Belle, but Emil stops her, saying that Belle can do it. Belle runs past the guards and jumps into the well while holding the bottle, shocking everyone. Kahoru questions Emil why Belle would do such a thing, and he says that Belle owed her life to her, and it's their duty to protect her as eyes of the goddess. The guards try to kill them for destroying their only source of water, but they fall in pain as Kahoru creates poison inside their stomachs. Emil runs to the well and shouts for Belle, hoping that she might still be alive. He starts losing hope, but is relieved when he hears Belle calling his name from behind, and is shocked to see she is unharmed. He runs towards her and hugs her, as we learn that Kahoru put her inside the item box as she jumped into the well without anyone noticing. Everyone regroups after their victory, and an injured horse from the enemy army catches Kahoru's attention, so she heals the horse and decides to keep it. They all head back to the castle side by side, as Kahoru gathers information about the enemy from the birds. She learns that the army is in a bad state after losing the secret well, and Fran has gained the nickname Fearsome Fran, after she displayed demon-like strength in the battle. The Imperial Army hopes to restock at the town of Nicotia, but upon their arrival, they are welcomed by a huge army in front of them, and seeing his soldiers barely standing, the commander is forced to surrender. Kahoru tells the kids to return to the capital without her, but they insist that they want to stay with her. She tells them that she can't protect everyone, so they must go back and take care of the house, promising them she will come back safely. Kahoru and the remaining group head toward the west, where the rest of the Ligot's army is attacking from. They reach the army outpost where the general updates them about the ongoing situation. We learn that both armies are currently in a standoff with the same number of troops, and that direct confrontation can't be avoided, so Kahoru decides to lure the Imperial Army using potions as bait. The next day, the general loudly announces the fall of the invading army, and the arrival of Prince Roland with a huge number of potions, making sure that the enemy hears it. The enemy commander gets greedy, ordering everyone to attack, and the battle begins. Kahoru tells Roland to join them, and try to draw their focus so they leave themselves open. Roland introduces himself to the enemy, and challenges everyone to attack him if they dare. Dozens of soldiers start riding towards him, but to his surprise, they pass right by him, and go straight towards Kahoru. They surround her, but Fran rushes in to save her, killing many of the soldiers, but they keep on coming. A stray arrow flies toward Kahoru, but Roland intercepts it, and it pierces his shoulder. Fran continues to defend against the soldiers, but her sword eventually breaks, as she is pierced by a spear. Kahoru becomes infuriated, unleashing explosions on the battlefield, halting the war as a golden ray shoots out of her, reaching the sky. She orders everyone to stay put while she performs an important ritual, and even the enemy soldiers obey her. She appreciates Fran for her loyalty and hard work, and offers her a wish to have anything she wants in her next life. But Fran just asks for strength to protect her lord once more. She is pleased by her answer, and she tells Fran to fulfill her wish in this life, as she gives her a potion that heals all her injuries. She also gives Fran a holy sword, and grants her the title of Guardian Knight of the Goddess. 
Fran accepts her gift and charges at the enemies, slicing through them with ease. Fran chases soldiers with an evil look, while Roland and the rest of the soldiers beg Kahoru to give them swords as well. Fran continues on a rampage, while Kahoru fires explosions across the battlefield, scaring away all the enemy soldiers, while the enemy commander loses hope and decides to retreat. They discuss the aftermath of this war, saying that the Aligot won't mess with them again. Roland informs them that the priest who was caught has also confessed about their secret collaboration with the Empire thanks to one of Kahoru's potions. Fran proclaims that she will only serve Kahoru as a master and takes a leave of absence from Roland's service. He gives up on keeping her after seeing the determination in her eyes, and Kahoru also takes back the holy sword she gave him because he isn't a guardian knight. A month after their victory, peace talks are held in public at the royal capital, attended by King Sergei, the Chancellor of Aligot, and the Pope from the Holy Land. Sergei presents his demands to Aligot, asking for compensation for the damages, but the Chancellor argues that Balmor caused the war by confining the Angel and monopolizing her potions. However, Kahoru interjects, saying she isn't an Angel, nor was she confined. She tells them she doesn't belong to any kingdom and that anyone can buy her potions, but the reason no potion has reached a Ligot is because the potion expires five days after production. However, she assures them that she's working on making them last longer. Kahoru knows that a Ligot only attacked because their own lands are too harsh for farming, but she offers up a solution to their financial crisis. We see that she created a bottle in the shape of the world, and she was able to discover a nearby island with fertile land and resources. She advises them to use their abundant forests to build ships to get there so they can trade with the foreign lands and improve their economy. She also asks King Sergei to collect the compensation in installments to reduce their burden, and he agrees to this. The people from Aligod are touched by their compassion and thank them, but we see the Pope, who refuses to pay any kind of compensation and denies any involvement in the war, despite the written confession from the captured priest. He instead asks them to apologize, but Kahoru confirms the Holy Land's involvement in the war, so the Pope calls her a servant of the devil. She exposes their plans to confine her, under the pretext of safeguarding her to strengthen their image as a Holy Land while monopolizing her potions. The cornered Pope decides to summon Celeste, using an orb she had left behind, but is shocked when she is friendly towards Kahoru. Celeste also rejects any involvement with a country or its people, denouncing Ruta as a holy land, and declaring that she won't forgive anyone for using her name for their personal gain, but they can continue to worship her as their goddess. Celeste leaves, saying that it's time for her to report back to the god of Earth. After four years, we learn that a lie god is improving itself, while Ruta is being ruled by a new government. Kahoru has retired from the workshop, and Emil and Belle have grown attached to each other, while Fran and Roland are now married. Kahoru decides to leave on a journey to find a husband, but is again followed by the others. She decides to go to the countries in the east, after passing through Brancos. Ferdinand is happy to learn that Kahoru has returned, and rushes to meet her, but is disappointed when the mates there tell him that it was Kahoru's older sister who has already left. We see Kahoru and the group riding towards the town of Salinas, and she reminds them of their facade as a family of nobles. The party arrives at Salinas, and they book three separate rooms in a hotel. Kahoru is determined to earn money and find a husband, but just as she sets out to do that, she gets kidnapped by a group of thugs. We see that she isn't the only one to be kidnapped, and she notes that the thugs only kidnap pretty girls, which makes her unusually happy. At night, the innkeeper tells the group that Kahoru left soon after arriving at the inn, and the group figures that something must have happened to her, because she isn't back for dinner which she never misses. Meanwhile, we see Kahoru help a girl by taking her pain away and transferring it over to the guard who is unwilling to help her. He threatens to attack her, so she tells him that she can use the same spell on him again, but with his sword this time. The guard runs away from the cell out of fear, and Kahoru calms the girls by saying that she will save them, but suddenly the leader of the kidnappers rushes into the basement, demanding an explanation. Kahoru acts meek and tells him that he left for no reason, fooling him into believing that the guard is just slacking off. Kahoru figures that the kidnappers must be part of a larger organization and decides to expose them. Out in the city, Roland and the rest are searching for Kahoru, but she's nowhere to be found. The guards keep rotating because of Kahoru's schemes. 
One guard is assigned to watch over the girls, while the rest are scolded by the leader upstairs. Kahoru makes use of this and asks the guard what's going to happen to them. She is shocked to learn that they will be sold as slaves to noble families, and she thinks that they are backed by a much larger organization than she had thought. She learns from the guard that Roland and the others are searching for her in the city, but he reveals they will be transported in the morning, so Kahoru decides it's time to make a move. Morning arrives, and the girls are loaded into barrels to be transported. As the carriage starts moving, Kahoru summons a knife, which she uses to free herself from her restraints, but she also ends up cutting herself. She holds in a scream as she quickly drinks a potion, realizing later that she could have just teleported the ropes to her item box. They arrive at a checkpoint, and Kahoru bursts out of the barrel screaming for help, but we see that the checkpoint guards are in cahoots with the kidnappers. She decides to put an end to things, and uses the same techniques she had previously used against the Empire to cause a commotion, letting her group know where she is. As the kidnappers and guards rush towards her, she deals with them by kicking barrels and using pepper spray. The rest of the girls pop out from the barrels, spraying the other kidnappers. Kahoru's group and the guards arrive, but find all the kidnappers have already been dealt with. Fran scolds her for being reckless, and the guard captain inquires about what happened. She takes the opportunity to reveal everything about the kidnapping ring, and exposes the checkpoint guards who were a part of it. Everyone is shocked by the revelation, and the captain asks them who took the people down. The onlookers assume that Kahoru defeated them, but to avoid the hassle, she just says that the goddess came to save them from being kidnapped. The domain lord arrives and asks Kahoru if she met the goddess, so she once again explains how she was saved, and adds that the goddess gave her a message to punish every single person who was involved, or she will punish them herself. She scares everyone, telling them that the goddess might destroy the domain lord's home, or burn the city down if any person remains unpunished or runs away. The mothers of the kidnapped girls arrive, but one of the girls named Riette is left behind. We learn that she was sold by her parents, so Kahoru decides to adopt her instead of sending her to the orphanage. The girl agrees, and Kahoru is delighted to finally have a partner like the others. They hit the road, and Kahoru worries that Riette will get tired if she sits on horseback for a long time. She asks her horse Ed for a favor, which he agrees to, but he changes his mind immediately when she asks him to pull a carriage. She entices him by making a potion container into a war chariot with various advanced functions, so he ends up agreeing. We see Celeste reporting back to the God of Earth, mentioning all of Kahoru's good deeds, and he compliments her for keeping Kahoru and her world safe. She's happy to hear this, assuring him that she will keep doing her job. We see the group continuing their journey to the royal capital Latenia, but Kahoru is exhausted, so she decides to go to a hot spring instead. They stop at a stable where a farmer points them to the hot spring deep in the mountains, but tells them about the distance, saying that there's no point going because they just get sweaty on their way back. But they decide to go anyway, so he also warns them about the band of thieves in the mountains. Roland asks Kahoru about the device shaped like a pig's nose on her face, so she explains that it's for detecting the sulfur from the hot springs. They find the hot spring, and as the girls unwind, Kahoru conjures a lion's head over the water source, explaining that it's a custom from her homeland. She attempts to talk about romance with the girls, but is surprised that both couples have nothing to share. Riet asks about Kahoru's own experiences, but this makes her sulk, as she realizes that she has never been in a relationship. Roland and Emil sit waiting together, when they hear rustling sounds and rush to capture three intruders. The girls arrive as one of them explains that they are residents of the mountain village that manages the hot springs. Kahoru apologizes for bathing there without permission, but they tell her she can use the hot springs as she pleases. Fran and Roland are suspicious of the boy when they invite them to their village, but Kahoru surprisingly agrees to go. On the way to the village, Fran wonders why she agreed, and she says that she only did it for fun. The chief greets them at the village entrance, inviting them in for a meal at the village hall, where Kahoru points out that the gathering looks like a matchmaking party. During the meal, the chief joins them and says that although they are just travelers, they are all now a part of the village, so they must help make decisions for the village. We learn from the chief that the village is terrorized by a band of thieves, and that they are looking for someone strong enough to deal with them, making Fran fantasize about saving the villagers. Just as Fran is about to agree, 
Kahoru stops her, offering them her prayers instead. The villagers lash out at Kahoru, snapping Fran out of her fantasy, and the others decide to leave as they realize that the villagers were just trying to use them as shields. As they are leaving, the village elders stop them, begging Kahoru and the others to save them. The chief tells them that they were simple farmers until the thieves came knocking at their door, demanding compensation in return for giving them protection. He says they were hoping for skilled fighters to pass by, because they lacked the means to handle the thieves themselves. But Kahora questions how they plan on dealing with all the other bandits that would target the village after they left, and lectures them for depending on other people for help, asking if their ancestors would have done the same. The chief is ashamed, but the kids step up, showing their resolve to fight for their village, and asking Kahoru to teach them how to fight. The villagers rally behind the kids, and they are determined to protect their village. Kahoru agrees to train them, saying that she will only teach them but not fight for them. Fran and Roland train the men in martial arts, while Kahoru helps fortify their defenses by mixing a potion in water and instructing a villager to paint on the fences, which will make them as strong as concrete. They set up buckets as traps, but the chief tells Kahoru that there are no more. So Kahoru yells out to Celeste, teasing her about her chest, so Celeste drops a bunch of buckets on her, but Kahoru just collects them. The villagers finish fortifying their defenses, and one of them announces that the thieves have arrived. The chief rejects their demands at the gate, so they try to break the fences down. The fence holds strong thanks to the potion, and the men get cut by the thorns when they try to squeeze through. The thieves get taken out by the various traps, and the villagers charge at the remaining thieves with their spears. One of the kids tries to attack the bandit leader, who pushes his sword away and tries to kill him, but the chief stops him. Fran jumps onto the battlefield, cutting down a tree as she lands, forcing the leader to surrender after seeing her strength. They round up all the thieves, and Kahoru tells the villagers to send a messenger to the city and exchange the thieves for a bounty. Kahoru recommends another visit to the hot springs on their way back, but one of the kids runs after them, asking Fran to teach him more martial arts so that he can kill more enemies. But she tells him that it's meant for protecting your loved ones, and she encourages him to grow up and become a brave farmer. Later that night, the girls rest in the hot spring as Kahoru plans to open a potion shop next, but before she can continue, they hear a sound nearby. Fran throws a bucket into the bushes, revealing Emil and Roland, who get flustered and blame each other, as the girls accuse them of trying to peek. We see soldiers outside a new drugstore, and they see that it has medicine for any condition. They excitedly check it out, and we see that it's Kahora's shop. We learn that she opened the shop in the Kingdom of Jushral, selling her potions for profit so she can live an easy life. The soldiers ask about the specific type of potion, which we learn deals with itchy feet, a common condition known as soldier syndrome. Kahoru sells three types of potions, from just relieving the itch, to completely healing the rash. The soldiers find the cheapest potion quite affordable since it's only three silver, but Kahoru knows that once they use it, they'll be hooked and be forced to keep buying it. Kahoru moves on to the second phase of her plan as we cut to the guild, where Emil and Bell accept a job posted by Kahoru to act as her guards, and Kahoru announces their tasks in front of other hunters. Emil introduces himself and Bell to her, and we learn that they are doing all this to avoid suspicion, because news of the Angel's party has reached the kingdom, so by doing this, they'll be able to live together without raising any eyebrows. Kahoru and Riet stop at the market for groceries, where we see Roland and Fran secretly following them. Fran wonders why they don't live with Kahoru like Emil and Bell, so Roland explains that Kahoru did it to give them space since they are engaged, but Fran disregards him, rejecting all of his advances. As they head back, a boy offers to carry Kahoru's groceries for two coppers, as he tells her about his group who do menial tasks around the town to earn money. The boy is shocked to learn that Kahoru has her own store, and he introduces himself as Gum, before he runs off. We see Gum and the kids counting their money from the day, disappointed that they don't have enough, but Emil and Belle show up, bringing them food from Kahoru and offering to cook for them. Gum tucks the kids into bed at night, and asks Emil about their past, so Emil tells him about how bad their lives were before they met Kahoru. Gum wonders how they became so successful, but Emil hesitates to answer, because he doesn't want to reveal Kahoru's identity. At the shop, Kahoru tells Riet to run upstairs as army officials enter. 
The officer introduces himself as the Royal Army's 2nd Battalion Commander, Colonel Nevis, and he offers to buy the soldier syndrome potions in bulk. He notes that the 10,000 soldiers in the army could benefit from her soldier syndrome potions, but Kahoru asks about the other 9 battalion commanders. He promises to distribute the potions fairly among the other battalions, and even promises to sell them at the same price. Kahoru wonders what he gets from doing this, but he says that it's not something that a civilian needs to know. Kahoru ends up agreeing to the deal, and she thinks about all the money she'll be making. Gum asks Kahoru if he can become like Emil and Bill, so she assures him, saying that everyone has value, and shows him a flute that she will use to call him if she has worked for him. Kahoru delivers her potions to Nevis in his office, but she asks for a tour of the place before she leaves. They see soldiers practicing communication using boxes, and they seem to have a code, but Kahoru is able to understand them, and she knows that they are talking about her. Back at the shop, she is suddenly visited by a frustrated commander, who complains that Nevis hasn't been sharing the potions with the other battalions. She assures him that his battalion will get priority for the next shipment, and says that separate arrangements will be made for each battalion, so the commander thanks her for the consideration and leaves. A noble arrives at the shop, and we learn that he's the landlord, Count Olam. He presents her with the contract, that says the landlord will receive half of all profits, as well as ownership over the products, allowing him to control the pricing, and know the method of production. Kahoru is furious at the terms, but accepts the contract. Olam tells the realtor to handle the paperwork, and after he leaves, we learn that he got the rights to the shop after bullying the previous owners. The realtor wonders why she agreed to such an unfair contract, but she just asks him for a favor instead. The next day, Olam prepares to collect the previous day's profit, and we learn that his main motive is to acquire the production method for the soldier syndrome potions. But he enters to find Emil and Bell selling lunches instead, and they tell him that Kahoru is at the new shop, while this shop now sells box lunches. Olam is furious and goes to Kahoru, demanding an explanation, so she tells him that she will keep moving shops if he keeps buying them, and she might even have to move to another country, but she will tell everyone that she couldn't sell potions because of him. Roland also tells him to back off, threatening him with Fran's sword, so he offers Kahoru her shop back and says he won't disturb her again. They go back to their original shop, but Belle tells them to get ready to make lunches. Kahoru tells her they can go back to selling potions, but Belle reveals they have an order for 50 lunches that was booked in advance. They are all shocked to hear this, but they prepare to get to work, and Kahoru wonders when she will have her easy life. We see a vegetable farmer arriving from the village of Goa, but there's a rat that jumps out of his cart and makes its way into the city. Riet tries to wake Kahoru up, when Belle barges in, reminding her that they have to make more lunches. We see the groups making their lunches, and Kahoru wonders if she could just make all the boxes using her ability, but she decides to do her best. All the lunches are quickly sold out except Kahoru's. The customers compliment how good the other lunches are, but they think Kahoru's are just normal. Kahoru is devastated hearing this, so they console her by grabbing some of her lunches, but she's frustrated that she sold the least, even though she came up with the recipes for all of the lunches. Kahoru thinks about turning their drugstore into a convenience store, since they already sold a lot of things other than just potions. Fran tells Kahoru that they are out of potions that cure fevers, and Kahoru wonders if there's a cold going around. She prepares to go deliver potions to the army, and Fran decides to secretly follow them, leaving Roland to handle the store. Gum and his friends accompany Kahoru, and tell her that Emil and Belle have been taking care of them in their free time. They arrive and Kahoru enters the office, where Nevis introduces her to Commander Larsrik. She confronts Nevis about the complaint she received about him not sharing the potions, but realizes that he has no ill intent, and thinks that she shouldn't jump to conclusions. But she accidentally reads a document on the table, and lashes out at Nevis for selling her potions illegally and embezzling money, but we see that he's confused. He asks how she can read a document that is written in a coded language, and we learn that it was seized from a gang that embezzles military supplies. Kahoru figures that she can read it because of the language ability Celeste gave her, so she ends up explaining to them how to decipher it. Nevis is impressed by her and offers her a position to join the army, but she turns him down. We see Larsrik arrive at their shop, and he tells Kahoru that he has a personal request, and invites her to his house. 
Kahoru and Riet follow him back to his house and are shocked to see how big it is. We learn that Larsric is a Viscount, but Kahoru assumes that he might not be that rich after seeing how cheaply the house is furnished. Larsric asks her to find a treasure hidden in the house, and we learn that the Larsric domain has been suffering from crop failures over the last few years, causing their finances to run dry. So he wants to find the treasure that was discovered by the family several generations ago, but its location was passed down through word of mouth, and the Viscount three generations ago passed away before telling the next in line. Larsric takes out a coded document, which is the only hint about the treasure, and he wants Kahoru to decipher it, but the document has no mention of the treasure's location. Larsric becomes disappointed, and reveals that his father and grandfather have searched everywhere but were unsuccessful, and they only know that the treasure was brought to the capital. She takes pity on him, so she conjures a metal detector-shaped potion, and she sets it to detect gold. It instantly reacts, but she realizes that it's just reacting to the gold in Larsric's wallet, so she sets it to detect gold that's above 300 grams. They follow its directions and arrive at the treasury, but are disappointed when they see that it just points to the remaining gold coins in the vault. She excludes the gold from the search, but the detector fails to find any other gold in its range. However, Kahoru deduces that all the gold coins combined wouldn't weigh more than 300 grams, so the detector must have been pointing at something else. She runs toward the room behind the treasury, requesting to cut open the wall, because she suspects that the treasure is hidden inside. But we see that the wall is empty, and Larsric sulks over this failure. Riet enters the room, asking Kahoru to heal a bug bite. She sprays a potion over the outside, but she suddenly realizes something. She heads over to the vault, scratching it with a coin, revealing that it's made of gold, and the treasure was the vault itself. Larsric celebrates, but Kahoru reminds him that even the treasure will run out if his crops keep failing, advising him on how to find and solve the problems that cause the failures. Larsric prepares a meal for them, and introduces them to his family. Kahoru assumes that his two sons like her, as she fantasizes about her future as part of a noble family, but her dreams are shattered when we learn that they only want the Soldier Syndrome potion from her. Later at night, we see Gum screaming for Kahoru, asking for her help. She follows him to his friends, who are very sick, and we see that people all over the city are sick with severe fevers and coughs, as Kahoru wonders if it's an epidemic. We see the epidemic continue to spread as many people lose their lives, and everything closes down. Nevis reveals that the epidemic spread from the village of Goa, east of the capital, which is currently in a lockdown enforced by the army. Roland doubts the competence of Jishril's royal family, because they have yet to choose a strategy. Fran worries about the villagers of Goa running out of food because of the lockdown, and Kahoru wonders what she should do. She thinks about just waiting for things to pass, so she can go on with her easy life, but she decides to help everyone. She doesn't care if her identity is exposed, and tells the others that they may need to move again after this, as she declares that the goddess's light is back, but the others are happy about this, and Nevis is shocked that Kahoru is the rumored angel. Kahoru arrives at the statue of the goddess in the city center, and uses her whistle to call all the kids. She tells them to spread the news that she will distribute a cure to everyone in the morning, and the kids take off to inform the town. She instructs Roland to inform the nobility of the plan, and gives Fran a bag of potions to deliver to Nevis for the soldiers guarding the area. Morning arrives, and the town gathers as Kahoru tells everyone about the cure, threatening them to maintain order or else they will face the goddess's punishment. She conjures a statue of Celeste, with the potion pouring out of it, explaining that it will cure the illness if they already have it, or prevent it if they don't. A man steps up and drinks the potion, instantly feeling better, so the other people rush in. Kahoru hands a bag of potions to Larsric for the royal family, because they can't line up in front of the statue. A noble arrives, declaring that the statue belongs to him, but Kahoru blows up his carriage, and he begs for forgiveness. Kahoru summons another statue and tells the noble to get in line like the rest, while directing the soldiers to the other statue, so they can help out after being cured. Nevis asks Kahoru what she will do after this, so she tells him that she plans to head towards Goa, to find the root of the problem, saying that she won't let anyone die. Nevis decides to join her, and he leads them to Goa. Ed complains to Kahoru about being left alone in the barn, so she tries to apologize, 
and Nevis is surprised that she can even talk to horses. Kahoru informs the villagers about the potion when they arrive at Goa. They are skeptical at first, but after seeing an old man instantly cured after drinking it, they quickly change their minds. The whole village quickly regains health and rejoices, while Kahoru tries to locate the source. She asks the chief about the first patients, and they figure that the source must be somewhere in the valley. They go over to the valley, and we see Kahoru wearing a glasses-shaped container that we learn helps her locate things, which she calls the searcher. The searcher detects the virus nearby, but it moves quickly, and we see that the virus is spread through animals. Kahoru extends the range of the searcher, and locates the source of the virus, finding a black warped ball in front of them, which spits out an infected animal. Kahoru figures that it's a distortion, so she decides to summon Celeste. Celeste wonders what she wants, but is shocked when she sees the distortion. Celeste tells everyone to back away as she prepares her attack, and she successfully destroys the distortion, but the impact causes everyone running away to fall down. They get up, and see Fran scolding Celeste for not being considerate about Kahoru's safety. Kahoru stops her, and she tells Celeste about the epidemic that the distortion caused, telling her that the cleanup of the aftermath is also her responsibility. Celeste isn't too keen, but Kahoru mentions Earth's God to convince her, saying that he might even pat her head if she does a good job, so she excitedly heads off to deal with it. Kahoru prepares to leave with her companions, but Nevis asks what will happen to the statues she left in the capital, but we see that they self-destructed after five days. The group heads off, and they all think about where they should go next, so Kahoru suggests going to see the ocean. She thinks about how she hasn't been able to have her easy life yet, but she's glad for the friends she's made, and she's determined to continue until she achieves her goal. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.